Hey guys, it's Libby, and 2016, thank God, is over. Uh, so let's talk about some of the good things that happened, these, the good books that I read. Most people are able to pull together like a top 10, and some people even feel limited by that, um, top 10 books of the year. Um, I have top 5. I, I don't know if I'm pickier or if I just read a bunch of books that I felt kind of meh about, um, but, uh, but I only have 5 books that I felt worthy to feature in a favorites of 2016. So let's get right down to it. The first one is Illumine, book one of the Illumine files by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. This is a science fiction book about um, crazy space adventures, um, escaping from like evil governments and, and biohazards. Um, and it's told in a sort of non-traditional narrative format. Oh, it was so cool. It was so exciting. I read it in one sitting, which was actually a bad idea for like my heart rate. And I actually got my mom to read this too, and she really liked it, despite all of the um, like techno babble, which I wasn't sure she would understand. But she did. You can trust your moms with this book. The next I don't have a physical copy of because it is a Tor.com novella and it is Waters of Versailles by Kelly Robson. Um, now this is kind of right up my alley. It's a um, slightly fantastical version of events that happened in the Palace of Versailles during the reign of Louis the Fifteenth. Um, I have like a degree in French and Francophone studies and my concentration was in um, early modern court culture. So like the things that happened in Versailles under Louis 14, 15, and 16. Um, so I, I was into this. Um, and it's, it's sort of about the, in, the first flush toilets um, that were being installed. Um, and, but there's like also a mermaid. Side note, is there like a subgenre of mermaids at Versailles that I didn't know about? Because I feel like I've heard this premise in several places now. There's Waters of Versailles, The Moon and the Sun by Vonda McIntyre, and then um, The Passion by Jeanette Winterson. Does, it's not quite Mermaids at Versailles, but it's Webbed Footed Girl um, and Napoleon. So I, I actually looked up to like see if there was actually some rumor of like a mermaid at Versailles. I couldn't find anything, um, but if you know, let me know. Um, but so in addition to all of my um, nerding out about my area of expertise, um, this book was about like dad feels, which I feel like is not an emotion that gets explored a lot. Like the, uh, every book ever is about romance. And then if you're lucky, you'll get like a friend relationship. And I've read a couple sibling relationships, but you don't get a lot of parental relationships. Um, so I, I enjoyed this novella for that reason. My third favorite book of 2016, and yes, I am doing these in order. I was I was able to rank them. Um, it is Salt to the Sea by Rudy Sepetys. Um, this is set in 1944, five, oh gosh, I forgot, 1945. Um, and it's about um, refugees fleeing Eastern Europe um, on the ill-fated Wilhelm Gustlov. Um, and it, I also read this book in one sitting, like Illumine. Um, it was also really intense. I need to stop doing this to myself. Um, and it's, it's told in really short chapters from multiple perspectives. Um, and it's, it's kind of almost taking place in real time. Um, and I thought it was really well written from a sentence level. And also, um, I'm really glad that it exists from a premise level because this is a part of history that um, is often overlooked and it is overlooked no more. The next book is from way back early in the year. I think I read this in like January um, and it is S by J.J. Abrams and Doug Dorst which is a sort of complication of the, the, the fictional novel Ship of Theseus by V.M. Straka. Um, this, this is a weird one. I did do a review of it, so I will leave a link to that to sort of help you understand what's going on. But this is like, the ship of Theseus is a story, which you can read in this book, and it is interesting. It's, I, I didn't really think it would be my thing. Um, it's a, a mid-20th mid century political novel, which I'm normally not super into, um, but this was really interesting. And then on top of that, you get like the notes in the margins 
of some people, some college students who are reading this and writing back to each other. Um, and they're sort of trying to discover the identity of Straka and to what extent the events in here are true. So you have the story, you have their marginal notes, and then you also have like sort of artifacts, things that they find or additional things that they write to each other. There's postcards, there's, that's also a postcard, um, newspaper clippings. This was so cool. Oh my god, it made me want to be a spy. I shouldn't be a spy. And then before we get to my favorite book of 2016, um, I have a couple other superlatives that I wanted to mention. Um, so I, I didn't include any rereads in my favorite books of 2016 because like if I did do that every year it would just be like Rebecca, Meaning of Night, you know, my, my ten, you guys already know what my 20 favorite books are so it would just be a rearrangement of those. Um, but so I, I did reread several books um, and I wanted to give a most improved reread and a most disappointing reread, um, which are actually both by Terry Pratchett. So the one that improved most from my memory of it was Masquerade, which is um, one of the later books in the Witches series of the Discworld series. This one focuses on Agnes, um, who doesn't want to be a witch, so she goes to Ankh Pork to be an opera singer, um, but sort of the witchiness finds her. Um, it's so good. <laughs> And especially the, the, end, the final scene is just like transcendent and sublime and everything that I wanted, which I had completely forgotten from the first time I read. Um, and I have also kind of completely forgotten what happens in it again, which on the one hand I'm sad about because I can't like explain to you why it is so brilliant, but on the other hand means that I get to re-experience that all over again next time I read this, which hopefully won't be too long. Um, my most disappointing reread was A Hat Full of Sky by, by Terry Pratchett. Um, this is the second Tiffany Aching book, and um, I, I remembered liking this, and uh, The We Free Men, which comes before this, is totally excellent. And then this one is kind of dull and undiscworldy, so bummer. Then we have my least favorite book, I Want to Save You Guys, um, which is actually a tie between two short stories. Um, well, on the one hand, we have The Birthmark by Nathaniel Hawthorne, which I just read a couple of days ago. And on the other hand, we have The Bloody Chamber by Angela Carter. Both of these are like just about about the worst relationships between men and women. It's not good. I don't I don't really know which one I hate more. Um, Nathaniel Hawthorne has the advantage of um, you know not knowing any better. Um, his his the female character in the birthmark is not great, um, but but she's not particularly different than a character you might find in a Dickens novel or other novels of the era. Um, Angela Carter was writing in the 20th century, the late 20th century. She should know better. Um, on the other hand, I was not able to finish it. I was not able to finish The Bloody Chamber. It, it is the first book that ever made me, like, nauseated. Um, so maybe it gets better. But I can't. So just avoid those. And then my most what the fuck book is The Gargoyle by Andrew Davidson. This book, what the fuck. And then my favorite book of 2016. It took a lot for me to get through this, but eventually I did. It is the 900 page The Crimson Petal and the White by Michelle Faber. Oh my god, so good. And you know, now, like, I don't know why I hadn't been doing this before, but Michelle Faber definitely deserves to be listed among my favorite authors, which is really exciting because it means on my list of favorite authors there are now two people who are alive. And it's actually kind of easy to forget um, that all of his books are written by the same person because, like, this book is a sort of historical epic about Victorian London and... Um, my other favorite book by him is Under the Skin, which is like modern sci-fi and like ethical dilemmas. Um, and then his, his novellas are, he, he just writes really different sorts of works. Um, uh, but so this is about um, a, a prostitute in Victorian London and sort of her life. Um, she gets like 
taken in as the mistress of uh, a man who's on the rise in the perfume industry and it's also about some of the people they know um, and like I hear people use this phrase and I don't really like it and I don't really understand what this means but this is just the phrase that wants to come out so Michel Faber writes women really well I don't know I think this is like the first time where I've read a book by a man with female main characters where I'm like wow that is he gets it that is exactly what it's like that is the thought process that I have um, and I don't know if he is also this good at writing men and I'm just not a man so I don't notice it uh, but I kind of think he might be like extra skilled at writing women because um, of the the three novels that I've read of his um, Crimson Petal, Under the Skin, and The Fire Gospel. Um, the Fire Gospel is the only one with a male protagonist and I didn't really like that one um, and he's also written what's that one called? The Book of Strange New Things um, where the protagonist is a man um, which I haven't read but other people seem to be liking not as much um, so if you want to get into Michelle Faber start with a uh, start with the stories about ladies Okay guys, thank you very much for watching and if you have posted a best books of 2016, either a vlog or a blog, um, post it in the comments and I would love to check it out. Thank you!